Hi everyone, welcome to NetDev Simulation. This is an overview of the hotspots and lack of fusion prediction capability in NetDev Simulation. So up until and through the 2018.0 release, the primary capability of NetFab simulation was to predict issues in part-level parts related to stress and distortion. And 2018.1, what we've added is an ability to actually flag hot spots and cold spots in your parts. So um, you know, not all build failures, obviously, are caused by stress and distortion. So we wanted to kind of expand the capabilities that we have. And a common failure uh, cause that we see is just regions of parts that are not getting hot enough or they're getting too hot. So let me illustrate what I'm talking about here. So um, this is a part that has both thin and thick sections. So when we actually look at the thermal image of this build process, what we're going to see is that these uh, thin walls on the bottom of the part, they actually don't get so hot in the analysis. They have a high surface area to volume ratio and they, can, they have an easy path of conduction into the build plate. Now as we move into these thicker sections, we see the temperatures get very, very hot. So we don't have uniform temperature distributions throughout this build process. And then that can cause problems with non-uniform material properties, non-uniform microstructure. Uh, lower on these walls, you might have problems with the material not fully fusing where we weren't getting very hot. And then higher on these thick sections, we can have problems like oxidation or the material actually getting so hot that it actually burns away. So we want to be able to flag regions of the part that are likely to encounter those problems so that a user can modify the parameters before going to the machine and hopefully achieve a more uniform temperature distribution. So the way we attack this problem is going to look very similar to how we deal with the stress and distortion problem. So we use a multi-scale approach. So the small scale analysis, again, we apply our machine parameters to a small block of material. And what we get out of this is we get an understanding of uh, how much of this material is likely to get too hot under this parameter setting and how much of the material is likely to not get hot enough. And those temperatures of hot or too hot, those are user defined. So the information from this small scale run gets stored in a PRM file, just like for the stress and distortion. And that PRM file then gets mapped onto the part level when we pick a geometry. So we, we now, we, what we've said is if we know how this part's going to thermally respond under a parameter setting. And now from, this ge from running this geometry, we know how hot the material is going to be that we're depositing upon. We can combine that information and say these are regions of the part that are likely to not get hot enough or part regions that are likely to get too hot. So you might have noticed that at the small scale of this analysis, it actually looked a little bit different than what we show for the stress and distortion uh, PRM generation. So for stress and distortion, we have a uniformly fine mesh uh, within the layer. And that's because those elements can't be coarsened because we have a plastic strain field that's never going to dissipate and we need to capture that resolution. Now for the thermal problem, what we have is we need to capture the temperature field, but these, temperature, these temperatures will dissipate. So elements that are actually within the layer will become eligible to be coarsened. So we can run a much coarser, uh, more efficient mesh for these thermal problems because we don't have to worry about the plastic strain. And this allows us to run these PRM generations uh, you know, several times faster than what was possible for stress and distortion. So. Again, the idea is that we're adapting this mesh as we apply this heat source, and we're going to run this on the most computationally efficient mesh, but we're going to flag these peak temperatures on the finest mesh. So we have the efficiency of the adaptive mesh, but we have the resolution of the results of the finest mesh. So this is a nice approach. So it allows us to flag these peak temperatures, and then we can monitor what elements are getting too hot or not hot enough. So the next step is then, based on the user-defined inputs, what percentage of the elements uh, cross these thresholds. So I flagged, uh, this was an Inconel 625 analysis, so I flagged around the melting temperature of Inconel 625 as a lack of fusion temperature in this simulation. So about 16% of my elements did not uh, get above that melting temperature. So now I could have problems with the material not properly fusing. And I flagged around the evaporation temperature as uh, a hot spot temperature. So almost 6% of my elements got into that very, very hot region. So now that I know uh, if I apply these parameter sets to a block of material, uh, these are the problems. This, this is how likely I am to run into each of these problems. I can start to map this information to the part level. So now what we get from the part level is we get what are the peak temperatures. So for example, 
Now that I know that this layer is around 300 degrees C, I can look up from my PRM file how likely was I to encounter these problems when depositing on material that was 300 degrees uh, Celsius. And what we're going to be able to get from mapping this information is a map uh, at the end of the analysis that tells you how likely you were to have these problems. So we correctly flagged that lower on the wall here, we're most likely to have problems with lack of fusion. So this is the volume fraction of the elements in that region that experienced a problem with lack of fusion. And then these thick sections where we saw them get very, very hot in the video, those got flagged as most likely to have problems uh, with uh, hot spots. So elements in this region were exceeding, uh, so about 13.9% uh, of the elements in this region were actually exceeding that hot spot temperature. Material is getting too hot. So now the idea is you can use this information as guidance for changing these parameters before you actually go to build the part. Thanks.